Welcome back to my YouTube. We're gonna do something totally different today. We're all at home right now when we're teaching each other and ourselves to do new things that we've never done before. One of the things that I've been trying to do a lot is to teach myself to cook. Because my life is usually very fast paced, I'm eating on the go, I'm eating takeout, I never really have taught myself to cook. Some experiences have been incredible, but some other things have not gone so well for me. So I'm gonna try today something that I've been seeing everybody else doing, which seems really complex and hard, but I'm gonna give it a shot because we're now two months in and I think my cooking skills have improved. Today I'm gonna to make a Pullman loaf, which I've had before but never made myself. I'm not a very good baker. Being from the South, I mostly fry and cook everything, so this is not gonna be easy for me. I'm using a Pullman pan, which I've just learned from my YouTube team, AKA my fiance, that it is called Pullman because you can pull it and I'm a man. So I'm gonna start with the baking first. This is gonna be like kind of an all day activity. It says it's two hours and 45 minutes. So let's get started. All right guys, let's go over all the ingredients. Lukewarm water, heaping tablespoon of honey, one and a half teaspoons of salt, soft butter, instant yeast, all-purpose flour, non-fat dry milk powder. Got it? And a baking machine. It's not a baking machine, that's a, that's a mixer, a stand mixer. Okay, and a mixer, a stand mixer. First, I'm gonna test the temperature of the lukewarm water. It needs to be around 100, and it's at 99.3, so we are good to go. So we're gonna mix these in the order that they're listed in the recipe. So I'm gonna start with my lukewarm water. My one heaping tablespoon of honey, which I'm gonna use a spatula. Because I've never made the Pullman loaf before, I don't really know why it's important to do it all in order, but One and a half teaspoons of salt in the shot glass. Boom. Two tablespoons of soft butter. All right. Two and one fourth teaspoon of instant yeast. Before I add the flour, I'm gonna get my little mini whisk and I'm just gonna whisk it all together so it doesn't clump. I never get a chance to use this mini whisker and I think it's really cute. So this is very satisfying for me. Now I'm gonna add the flour. I'm going to adjust my stand mixer and slowly drop in the flour. I'm gonna turn that off for a bit and I'm going to scrape the sides just to get it all in there. And then I'm gonna add my last ingredient, which is the non-fat dry milk powder. All right, I'm gonna set it back on two and slowly mix. You're gonna check to make sure that this is soft under your hands. to feel for because I've never made this loaf but it seems not hard. Breaking news, chef experts have said it's not soft enough so we're going back for round two. Once it starts to make that noise when you've accidentally put your shoe in the washing machine and everything is hitting really hard and the machine is shaking, you should be good. So normally I would wash this spoon and like make sure everything was perfect but Life is not perfect. Now I'm placing in a lightly greased mixing bowl. The next step is that I'm using this dough scraper. I don't know what it is and I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and pretend like I know what all these tools are. They have been placed here for me by my fiance who does most of the cooking. But now I'm gonna take this dough scraper, I'm gonna remove from this bowl and put it in a lightly greased bowl. The purpose of doing this, oh, this is a great tool actually. See, these are simple things. 
things that I wish I had invented. So now I'm bringing in my Glad press and seal. Get at me, Glad. And this is like a sticky, oh, it's sticky. Now, we cover. You wanna try to put this somewhere warm while it's rising. In our house, we have a Lazy Susan little cabinet that stays mostly warm inside because it's next to the baseboard heater, so I stick it in there. Hey Google, set a timer for 90 minutes. One hour and 30 minutes, starting now. See you guys soon. Okay, our dough has been rising for 90 minutes now, and this is the big step two, and so now, I need to butter the pan. I've actually never really buttered a pan before, and excuse my dry hands because I've been washing them a hundred times a day. <clears throat> There's nothing like butter, you guys. Just use what's on my hand, and I'm going to butter the top. This is not beautiful in any sort of way. And my next step after this is I'm gonna put the dough into the pan. And I think from what I've been told, that that's the hardest thing to do. I need to make this a little more beautiful. But anyways, I'm gonna wash my hands now. Be right back. Is it one o'clock yet? Is it? Okay, what's next? All right, my next step is that now I'm gonna take the dough out it's been in our Lazy Susan cabinet for about 90 minutes, and um, I messed up on the butter, so it's actually been in there for like 100 minutes. But now I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna transfer it into the pan, and I think I'm gonna have to phone a friend to do that. We have been thinking all day long who is our friend that bakes the most, and my friend Ryan Roche, who's an incredible designer, is a great baker, so I'm gonna cold call her and see if she answers, <laughs> and if she's mad at me for calling her on my YouTube but I think she will be the best person to help me transfer it from the bowl to the pan. All right, now we have the dough. I'm gonna phone a friend, see if she gets annoyed. Ryan, hi, hi. can you see me? Yes. Okay, can you're, you yeah, you're on my YouTube, so hope that's okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so let me explain to you sort of what I'm doing now. So I'm on step three, because on step two was place the dough in a lightly greased bowl, cover it and let it rise for 60 to 90 minutes until it becomes quite puffy, and it has become quite puffy. Yeah. Okay, so now it says gently deflate the dough, which I don't know what okay, that means, so, so and, and, and shape it into a nine inch log. <laughs> yes. Okay, do you know how to do that? Yes, I do. Okay. Hold the line collar. Okay. Is your countertop clean? Yeah. Okay, good. So yeah, just, oh. just that's good. That's fine, don't worry. Oh okay. God. Just gonna remove it with the recipe. How about that? Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, so does this look like a more good amount? Um, I would put a tiny bit more and then like smooth it into like a circle. Cause you're gonna like pour your dough out. Okay. Yeah. Tiny bit more, perfect. Just okay. give yourself a tiny bit more. Tiny bit more, okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like okay. I'm at like a, a table in Las Vegas where I'm like, okay. okay, so what do I, what? Okay, grab your, yeah. And then just like tip it out onto your countertop, onto that flower. Um, it seems to be going somewhat well, yeah. It would, but. Okay, I'm pressing it, but not too aggressively. Yeah. This is sort of like how I would press my thighs to get into my jeans normally. Not aggressively, <laughs> but doing what we can. Yeah. Okay. But I gotta get it to a nine inch log now. So what, ha should I keep going okay. a little bit? No, I think that's good. What I think what you can do now mm -hmm. is yeah. 
think so. And then stick them together. Yeah, and then you want to like, you'll like kind of um, pinch it together at the top. Okay, got it. The pinching has been mentioned a lot and it didn't, I didn't understand. Okay. Everybody was talking about the seam. Yeah. And I didn't know what that meant because in our business, a seam yeah. is something totally different. Totally different. Okay, know. so this kind of looks like a big dream burrito, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so do you see it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, so here's my, yeah. I'm gonna take my bowl away. Yeah. And I just drop it in? Just gentle, be delicate, yeah. Okay, Let's my grandfather just, just keeps texting, I'm so sorry. Um. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna turn my oven on. I'm gonna wash my hands first. I'm gonna lay it on the top there for 60 minutes, set my timer, and then I'm gonna call you back when I bake. Okay. I love you. I love you. Thanks for answering my call. Yay, Bye. She taught me also how to make homemade Caesar dressing. And I've been making that like once a week and it's been really exciting. So, you know, if you guys have friends that are learning to cook, I think we have FaceTime, we have Zoom. It's like great to call someone and to learn. So yeah, I think lean on your friends. Okay, we finished the dough rising. It rose a little bit early, like 35 minutes is what it took. We set it actually on top of the stove and we forgot to turn the stove off, and by we I mean me, um, and I was scrolling through my phone and so it rose a little bit quicker, but the food experts have told me that that's okay, let's just hope it doesn't stick. And so now we're gonna remove the plastic. Absolutely. It's a little bit higher. Normally it should be half an inch from the top, but again, it rose too fast because I got busy. Which if this is the way to do this, but because this looks like it's gonna be a little bit tight, I'm gonna push this down. I think that's probably not the way to do it. And probably any bakers are like, this guy is an idiot. And I'm not disagreeing with you, but honestly, it's looking legit. So. Now I'm gonna slide my Pullman loaf top on. Beautiful. I'm just gonna say for a second, this um, loaf of bread has been cooked many times in my home since quarantine, like at least five times. And um, I thought, and I think my YouTube team thought that this was gonna be comedic, but turns out I'm making it better than anybody else. Just want you to know, look how perfect. We are ready to go into the oven. Are you taking note, YouTube team? Okay, I'm gonna place it in the oven now. Oh, my glass is fogged up. I think my eyebrows burn. Leave that there for 25 minutes and I'll be back. Nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. How I know I nailed it is that it's got a good color, it's got a good feeling, and most importantly, you have to have square corners on all sides. So Ryan's tip really helped me. I patted this in really well. I think I might've had a breakthrough for all of you chefs uh, with the spatula. So now we're gonna let this cool. Now we have the perfect bread. Almost six hours later, we are done. My glasses are off. I might or might not be wearing sweatpants under here. I don't know. It's almost four o'clock. We've let the bread sit for an hour. There are a few pleasures greater for me than a simple sandwich. It's something I've been making almost every day for lunch during this time. You answered. Okay, hi. 
Okay, so I have the finished product to show you. Are you ready? How did it turn out? Is it beautiful? Okay, I'm just gonna tell you that it turned out perfectly. It did? And it's all because of you. I'm not a fashion designer anymore, I make bread. Okay, that's it, our meal is prepared, but we are not at the final step yet. No meal in this house is complete without the sippy cup. Remember to like and subscribe and tell me in the comments what you would like to see me do next week. I don't think anything will turn out as perfectly as this had, but I will try. And I'm wishing everyone a great week. See ya.